to the first tutorial video in a series aimed at helping you understand the way that we design bike products uh, and hopefully improve your skills along the way. Uh, in today's episode we're going to talk about geometry skeletons um, which are pretty critical to obviously any product design. Um, so we'll dive straight into it. We're going to start with a bicycle frame. Um, so first thing we want to do obviously is create a new document. Um, we can call it um, bike geometry. Uh, we'll call it no, Bike Geometry 1. Uh, once that loads, it takes us in. Um, so the first thing you want to do is obviously gather all the information that you want. Um, there, you, you essentially want to make a list of fixed information uh, and then there'll be some other information that will be driven as you go through the geometry skeleton. Um, so you'll see that when we start to model. So I guess the first thing you want to do is start a new sketch. Um, we always start a sketch on the right plane. Um, think of that as the center line of the bike and I guess it makes sense to um, start with the drive side of the bike essentially. So we're looking at the drive side of where our bike's going to be um, and essentially we click on line, we're going to make it construction uh, and then we, we need to start putting some lines in place and then we can start to dimension um, from there. So I'm going to start with a line essentially the wheelbase. Um, now we, you could either put this above or below the origin and uh, the origin essentially is going to be your bottom bracket. It's always best to reference everything from the bottom bracket, that's kind of industry standard. Um, so we'll put the first line in place and like I talked about driven versus um, fixed numbers uh, or geometry, the wheelbase is, is a number that's actually going to be driven, it's going to be dictated to by some of the other uh, geometry that we put in there. So the next thing we'll do is again select another line construction. I generally I generally start with the um, the fork and the head angle and that kind of and, and work backwards from there. So the first thing you want to do is put your offset for the fork in. So let's go down to there uh, and this will be the fork. So it, obviously if you can see that it highlights um when it's perpendicular you want that to be you do want that to be perpendicular um so let's let's stop there and we'll start adding some dimensions and the whole thing will scale from there before we go any further um so we've already looked up our data sheet and we have all the information that we want for the bike frame that we're going to design so we know that the offset of this fork is 42 millimeters um so you can see now that everything's scaled so i'm just going to drag everything back up above the center origin uh, or the bottom bracket um, and then we can scale from there. So we've got a 42 mil offset. The next thing we need, um, which you can find on most manufacturers websites, is the axle to crown. Um, so this is essentially the full, the, the length from axle to where the, the crown race is going to sit on your fork. So we're going to type in 581 millimeters. So that's an average um, 160, 170 mil 29 or fork. Um, but again, you'll, you'll be able to get all of this information from manufacturers websites uh, and it's best to gather all of that up before you start your, your project. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is put our head angle in there. So let's say it's 64 degrees, for example. Um, and then what you want to do is think logically about it. So what goes above the fork? Well, essentially you've got your crown race and then you've got your head tube um, and your, your headsets in between. Um, so again, a straight line, make sure that it's parallel with the fork. Um, so we'll click there, we'll add that in. And again, let's dimension that. Um, if it's a, a zero stack semi-integrated style headset, which seems really common these days, we, we use three millimeters as a reference. I mean, each designer, each engineer might use a different number, but that's what we use. Um, and then essentially we're gonna put the head tube above that. So scroll back in. Uh, sorry, I'm on dimension. So back to center line, click on the top point. And again, you wanna make sure that this is in line with everything else. Um, so put that there and we're gonna make that 120 millimeters. So make sure everything's still in order. Make sure you've got axle to crown first, then headset, then uh, head tube. Um, so we can stretch some of these things out. You'll 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 learn over time like a rough idea of scale. Um, so the next thing that we can add in is the reach measurement, which we know goes from the top of the head tube and it goes to the origin of the bottom bracket. So we'll put that in and for this particular model, we'll say that's 490 millimeters. So it, with every dimension that goes in, we're obviously getting a bit closer to a fully defined sketch. Um, 
and then from the reach figure essentially we've got another line which is going to become your effective top tube so it's going to go to somewhere back here and I make sure it's horizontal um, and you can see it kind of snaps into place when it's horizontal so we put that in there and then from there essentially we're going to have a seat tube angle um, so we measure that, that and that, again that's measured from the origin um, now in more modern bikes sometimes the effective seat tube angles there's there's a, a couple of different ways of measuring that you might not want it to be horizontal with the top of your head tube you might want to put a specific saddle height or you know seat post height in there uh, so that can all be done afterwards essentially but this is not necessarily going to be your seat tube but it is going to be your your starting point for your seat tube angle so um, you can, I guess, determine that um, at this stage. So you're going to measure that from the horizontal and we're going to say, OK, say it's 77 degrees for toxic. And again, all this can be this can be edited and, and tweaked at a later date. Um, the other thing we need to do is obviously this is all floating in space. So we need to tell the geometry file, you know, what height the bottom bracket is going to be so again everything's everything's measured from this origin from this bb so let's just say that we're going to have a bottom bracket drop of 30 millimeters and um, so we'll put that in there and you can see now everything's fully defined apart from our rear center and um, why did we pick 30 millimeters well that's you could look at other models that you're trying to replicate or if you're starting from scratch and you want to understand it it's it's all related to the height from the ground so what you could do at this stage is uh, draw another line um, we'll draw a solid line this time uh, along here and that's going to become the ground that your bike is going to be rolling along and um, how do we know what height that will be well okay let's put a front tire in um, and we'll we'll decide that that uh, dimension for that so let's say it's a 29 inch wheel with a 2.4 tire or whatever you know let's put 740 millimeters in there for now and um, we'll in another episode we'll cover like wheel sizes tire sizes how to calculate exactly what diameter you need to use depending on the wheel the wheel size and the tire thickness um so we'll do that in another episode so right now we're going to make the ground and the tire uh, tangent um and if we move that we can just lock that into that just for good housekeeping i guess um so essentially we've now got a distance from the bottom bracket and from the wheel the wheelbase center line to the ground and um, this will be a driven dimension because you can't really it's controlled by the diameter of the tire so we can put it in here and it'll go gray and um, to show us that it's driven uh, so we know that the center line is 370 and essentially the bottom bracket height from the ground will be 340 that's obviously that's dictated by the wheel diameter and the bottom bracket drop if we change this to 40 mil obviously then these numbers will update so let's let's bring it back to where it is for now uh, okay so we could do the same we could put another wheel on the back if we need to but i don't think we need to right now the next thing you can do is your chain stay length and um, so there are going to be two ways you can you can either measure um as the crow flies in a direct line um and let's say that that's going to be four four six uh, or alternatively you could measure along the horizontal but that's less accurate um, so you'll see that you get two slightly different numbers uh, 446 versus 444.0 or 445 essentially and that's because of because the bottom bracket is not on the center line obviously it's the diagonal line is longer um, so it's good practice to measure point to point in the diagonal because it, it, it's going to be more accurate uh, and while we're doing rear center we can also put a dimension in for the front center again this will be a driven dimension and um, because everything else is fully defined so what you do is if you'll notice if, if as i rotate my mouse slightly to the side it moves from a horizontal measurement to a diagonal measurement we just hit enter and again you can see that that's driven if you're if you're finding it difficult to make that happen you could put another line in you could draw a line directly between the bottom bracket and the front axle and then all you need to do is click on that line with the dimensions and just pull it straight back and it will it will give you that exact measurement there but what you do what you end up with is lots of different lines that can sometimes confuse your drawing so uh, if you don't need it you don't you know you can just um click point to point and then shift the mouse a little bit uh, and, and it, it but it's personal preference you know you might change your change the way you do it um okay so that's our basic sketch we can now add in some other dimensions that are driven um so let's put in our effective top tube so we can measure point to point or click on the line um 
we don't have a chance to alter that because it's driven by some of the other numbers. But if we were to change the C-tube angle, obviously it would, it would change this number too. So um, like I said at the start, you'll have your information that's fixed. You know, that's what you start with and then you'll populate the rest of your geometry table with uh, information that is driven. Uh, and what we'll do is show you how to drive the geometry with a configuration table uh, in another episode and that will allow you to then add multiple sizes of the same frame in. Um, so that's the kind of basics. Um, more complicated um, frames might not have a seat tube that's directly um, lining up with the bottom bracket so you may need to add in another uh, another line so perhaps uh, your seat tube has a bend in it or it has an offset um, so essentially what you might do is from this fixed point in space your 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 seat tube might actually come at, at this at this angle um for example to give you clearance um or to match up with some of the parts you know some of the the profile of the of the bike frame um so again you can you can put that line in and you could measure that from the horizontal um and that's totally up for um you know you that's not fixed you can you can dictate what that is so it could be 70 degrees if you really wanted to um and that would allow you to have like i say additional clearance uh, if you don't necessarily know the angle that it needs to be but you know what clearance you need down here you can delete that angle you could dimension it as an offset from the bottom bracket so 80 mil it could be 50 millimeters offset uh, and then obviously if you really want to know the angle you can put it a, a dimension in but it will be driven um so it's gray so it's telling you that 72.66 um, and obviously super important to understand uh the height of the seat post too so what what we tend to do with this is we put a point in on the line that's going to become your seat tube um so if it's this revised version that's offset you can pop a line uh, a point on there and then we'll dimension that from uh well it's best to dimension from the bottom bracket so again it's not a horizontal you need to hover your mouse around here you see the way it changes then you can click on that and essentially if you want to have a 450 millimeter seat tube height then you've now got that dimension in there and that gives you a, re a reference point as you start to move on with the design uh, as to where your your seat tube is going to going to finish and um, so we can still manipulate a lot of these numbers to get to the geometry set that you want but basically now you've got the the skeleton of your uh, of your frame um, and from that point you can you can decide on how many sizes of frame you want and we can cover that in configurations in another episode um, but yeah that's pretty much good to go so we accept the sketch um, and that's it